This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whomever you are and whatever is happening on your journey of life, it is God who welcomes you here today, and so do we. We are so very, very glad that you are here. Those of you who are worshiping with us at home, I understand you're on a new format today. Welcome, so glad that you can be with us. And we invite you to have some bread or crackers, juice, wine with you so that you can partake in Holy Communion with us today. I want to say thank you to all of you for your ongoing support for the mission and ministries of this congregation. And just a quick word, we understand that this coming week we will be given the green light to meet without masks if you are fully vaccinated and boosted. I just want to say, as we say that, we also know of members who are currently sick with COVID. So I just want to say you do what makes you feel safe. If you want to walk in here with a hazmat suit so you feel comfortable, that's okay with us. So please take good care of yourself because you are a beloved child of God. We continue now with our mission statement, which we say boldly and with confidence, celebrating God's love and forgiveness, we serve others. We invite you now to stand as you are able for our opening hymn. Continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and for the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in the good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins 
are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. May I hear an amen. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of the day together. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And we invite Miss Melissa to come up for the children's story message. morning everyone happy Sunday so today I wanted to do a, something a bit different so um, I don't know if many of you know but I work um, with kids during the week too and we were working on Valentine stuff and all these stuff and then just yesterday one of the students started crying because she wished that one of her um, that her parents would be together. So I was like, hmm, what can I do something at church to spread love, to make them know that they're important, to remind them that God loves them. So today I'm going to have the kids. I have some notes here, and they're going to decide to pass it to whomever they want to. It has a little message inside, and you guys can read it. Okay? So... Let's see. Um, you want to take one? No? You don't want to take one? You want to you wanna go with your sister together? No? Okay. You want to do it? Stella? Yeah? Okay. Go ahead. And go take it to anybody you want out there. Have them, uh, que ellos lo abran. Okay. <laughs> Dorothy. <laughs> okay. You want to go hand one out? To whom you ever you want. Romeo, you want to go give one? <laughs> okay. You want to go hand one out? No? You, Damien? No? Romeo. Otro? Ve a otro. Alguien más. <laughs> Raylani, you want to go take one? Yeah? Okay. Vale, you want to go with mommy and take one? No? No? Okay. Stella, you want to take uh, another one? Yeah? Okay. Okay, go ahead. Raylani, go ahead and take it. And Stella, go ahead and... No? Okay. Then give one, we'll give one to Romeo. He can hand out. And then Raylani, go spread that one out. No. Oh, okay. You gave it to Rilani? Okay. So we'll start out with Dorothy. Dorothy, what did yours say? Okay. Her says happy Valentine's, and then you guys got one here. What does yours say? God is proud of you. God is proud of you. What does yours say? 
Okay. What is, who else got one? Ah, right here. What is yours say? God is your best friend. Okay. And then, Reilani, what is yours say? You're wonderful. And who else? Okay. So as you can see, I spread these out because I wanted to put a smile on you guys. And I also wanted to make sure to remind you that God loves you. He's proud of every one of you. And just to remind you guys that tomorrow is Valentine's Day. So I wanted you guys to be remembered that God is always our best friend, that he's very proud of who we are, that we should smile, and that we should spread love because tomorrow is Valentine's Day. So thank you. Now I'm going to uh, pray. Let's go ahead and close our eyes. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day. Thank you for having these wonderful, amazing kids here. I ask you that you take care of each and every one of them, take care of their family. Also take care of all those people out there who are sick. And also, thank you, Jesus, for always spreading this amazing love. You are our best friend, and you always remind us that your love is the most amazing one. In the name of Jesus, amen. The first reading this morning is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else, it's perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruits of their doing. The second reading is a psalm, and we'll read it responsively. Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of of the scornful. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinners in the counsel of the righteous. Here ends the reading. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Holy Gospel, the Good News, according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place, a plain, with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come 
to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich. For you have received your reward. Woe to you who are full, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The good news, the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. A clergy friend of mine told me this story this week. I'm going to try it this way. <laughs> that after preaching on this passage or a passage similar to this, he was greeting everyone as they were exiting the church, and a woman came up to him and said, I don't come to church to feel bad about myself. I come to church to feel good and he never saw her again. Huh. <laughs> then what do you do with a passage like this, huh? These are tough words, and they are words directly from Jesus. And that is why we are thinking about changing the name of our Tuesday Bible study to struggling with Scripture or battling with the Bible or even jousting with Jesus. <laughs> Because Jesus' words are hard. And they get under our skin, it gets into our minds, it pierces our souls, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Well, today we have what's called the Sermon on the Plain, or the Sermon on a Level Place, which is Luke's version of the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is found in the Gospel of Matthew. Again, as always, we try to follow each gospel in and of itself, right? Follow its own arc, its own purpose, its own themes, rather than in our minds putting all of these together from the various gospels. It's okay to do that, but we try to see what the author is getting at. So Luke's version here is very, very down to earth. It is not spiritualized as we would find in the gospel of Matthew. It's not blessed are the poor in spirit. It is blessed are the poor. It is not blessed you who will hunger and thirst after righteousness. It is blessed are you who are hungry. So which one is right? Which are the actual words of Jesus? Do you know the answer? The answer is yes. The answer is both. Because scripture is getting at one great truth, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and Jesus Christ came to save us and this earth. That's the great truth we're getting at. So both of these are true. But goodness, 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 did we struggle with this in our Bible study this week? Did we not? Those of you who were there, you know that this is true. Oh my goodness. So we didn't relate so much to the being hungry or being poor, but wow, did we relate to blessed are you who weep. Blessed? Blessed? What are you talking about, Jesus? How is it possible to feel blessed when you're going through that weeping and that grief and that heartache and that incredible pain, be it grief from the death of someone 
or another great loss in life? Is this passage all about delayed gratification that we are supposed to somehow struggle through this veil of tears, which is our life, so that we can receive the reward in heaven? Are we supposed to be miserable here on earth? Is that God's plan? My friends, we have to be so very, very careful with this text and texts like this. One of our Bible study members did some research before our meeting. I am so grateful for that. And found out that this passage was used in our country to keep slaves in their place. Suffer now, dear little slaves, at my hand, and Jesus will promise you a reward in heaven. Did they not even read the next lines, let alone the words we're going to hear next week from Jesus? What an abomination of Jesus' words. My friends, we do not believe that these words of Jesus are only for the next life. They are for us now. The blessings, and yes, the stark warnings. If the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And from this gospel, the gospel of Luke, Jesus says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Those are the words of Jesus. So what do we do with Jesus' words today? I don't come to church to feel bad about myself. I come here to feel good. That's what that woman said before she left. And by and large, as much as I would like to judge her, I think I agree with her. Because ultimately, somehow, this is good news. Gospel means good news news. But sometimes we have to look very, very hard to find the grace. I remember an older friend of mine, a woman whose life I would never want to experience for myself, a person that was very familiar with grief and hardships. But she gave us this famous line, the best gifts I've ever received have come wrapped in poo. And I will tell you, she did not say poo. When I first met this woman, I wondered how on earth she could say such a thing. I knew part of her story. She had been through a lot. The things that she had been given in life did not at all look like a gift. It looked a lot more like what we pick up after a dog every morning. But Christ had transformed these hardships into something good. My friends, no one, no one is allowed to say these words to you out of context. Only Jesus only the one who has earned the right to tell you that you are blessed even during difficult times. Only Jesus, only Jesus is allowed to give us these challenging words. For Jesus is the only one who has earned the right to tell us how to live this life. Blessed are you. Woe to you. Now this is the good news the good news is this, that God never gives us a command, no matter how difficult it may seem. God never gives us something without giving us a way to do it. So these words are not scaled to the top of this impossible mountain, and I will meet you at the top. No. These words are a promise. Step by step by step, I will be with you. Another member of our Bible study 
pointed that out to us, and unfortunately for me, I must have a thick head. I had to hear it two times before I could finally hear her. The promise of this is Jesus is with us every step of the way. Receive these words of Jesus knowing that you never, ever have to do this alone. This is our answer to this difficult passage. Trust Jesus, and then do what he tells you to do. It's that simple. And in that process, this is how the transformation happens. God, I give this to you. It's too much for me. I cannot handle this. Here is my grief, my pain, my shortcomings, my mistakes, my needs. Help me. Forgive me. Take them. You take the burden of my life. And then in its place, God, just give me what I need to do today. Whatever it is you need me to do, I will do it. If it's feed the hungry or clothe the naked or visit or care for the sick and the imprisoned or welcome the stranger who comes to us. And that is what we do. I've been trying to do this in my own life. Someone gave me this amazing idea. Give God everything. And so I do. All the concerns and the worries and my mistakes and my problems. Everything I'm worried about in this congregation with the people here in the building, etc. Give it all to God. And then say, God, for today, just give me what I need to do today. And it works. It works so beautifully, my friends. It really works because we have a living, loving God. And just this week, to experience people coming to our door and asking for food, knowing that they've looked it up and they know that somewhere at this campus, at this address, they can get food and they're hungry and they're out of work and they need help. They come to the door and they tell us a little bit of their story, why they're looking for it. They need to explain themselves. They're not looking for just a handout. They're in pain. They have needs. And we can tell them that right around the corner here on this campus, they can receive food. Or they can come once a month to the drive through or if they're over 65, they can do the senior drive through offered by the food bank. What a credible gift. Thank you, Jesus, that here on this campus, we can answer some of the things that you've commanded us to do. And thank you, all of you, for your support for Project Hand. But what about these woes? What about these things? Woe who are rich or full or laughing or carefree or well-esteemed by those around us? Aren't we supposed to experience those things? Isn't that what God wants for God's beloved children? And didn't we hear from Jeremiah and from the psalm that those are hallmarks of things that we're going in the right direction, that we are following God? Well, to that, we had another answer from another member of our Bible study group, the one that finished us up for the day. The reason we have these blessings is so that we can bless others. We are blessed to be a blessing. Yeah, Irv, we heard you. This is where the transformation begins. We give it all to God, the painful and the good, all of it, and God transforms it. And God gives us back what it is that we are to do. I would like to invite you now to participate in this handing things over to God with me now. So I invite you to pray. This will all be in your own head and in your own mind. Jesus, please, these are the things that are burdening me. These are the things that are causing pain. I give them to you now. And now I willingly take back from you, Lord, anything that you want me to do today. Amen.
We invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing the song based on the Matthew version of the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, Blessed Are They. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Blessed are those who trust in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continued blessing to the world. God of grace. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with, a, with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has eroded after deforestation. Re resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace. Search the hearts of those who govern that they lead with humility 
inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and planet. Sustain truth tellers and social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, uncertainty. Provide, all, provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer your steadfast love, who suffer. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon those who look to you for hope and healing. Bless doctors, nurses, and social workers, therapists, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are scared, sick, or in pain. Today we pray especially for the recipients of our prayer quilts and their families, Steve and Anna. We pray also today for Vicki, Abby, Cindy, Rosa, Maria, Kathy, and continued prayers for Chris, Sherry, Denny, Margarita, Anna, V, Vicki S, and our Cindy, Dias, at the death of her uncle, who was like a father to her, and Ruby, who has been readmitted to the hospital and for Pastor Jan Rosen, who has going to go through surgery. Renew this congregation in our shared mission as we plan, dream, and look forward to the future you are preparing for us. Inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. We pray your blessing on the ministries of this congregation, especially this week for our children and youth ministries and for Lutheran social services, that they continue to help all of society, God of grace. Other prayers may be offered at this time, either in your heart or aloud. God of grace. Christ is raised from the dead, and so we cling to the hope of that resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who have lived and died and in the hope of eternal life with you, God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these all to you, our prayers to you, in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet found in your ear. Today we pray for Mauricio, who's in advanced stages of cancer. We pray for your continued love, healing, strength, and courage for Stephen. And we pray for Anna, as she deals both with the broken foot and the death of her best friend. Surround her with your healing, your strength, your courage, and comfort. For these and for all whom we pray, Lord, give them your peace. Meet their needs and let them know that it's you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to
We will continue now with the sharing of God's peace, and we'll have the receiving of new members next week. The peace of Christ be with you always. We invite you to share the sign of God's peace with those around you, an elbow bump, a high five, a waving. Here we go. Those of you at home, we invite you to share the peace with anyone that may be with you, or of course you can put it in uh, the Facebook pass uh, uh, chat. We'd love to see that as well. And in any time, just raise your hand in the direction of someone who needs God's peace and just bless them. We thank you for your ongoing support as mission partners in our mission and ministry here at St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Thank you so very much for that. Of course, you may bring in your offerings, send it into the office. You can use our Venmo, such a tongue twister, which is at St. Mark's Church Chula Vista. Or you may work this out with your, uh, your bank to give electronically. Any way you do so, we are partners in ministry and we are following Christ. So thank you for that. Hey, I forgot to do, I'm not going to forget this, our Thanksgiving moment. I'm so excited to say this, and you may begin. We'll begin. Go ahead. Our Thanksgiving moment this week, um, so grateful. Uh, the kids in this service and in the second service made some beautiful cards that were, um, we were able to bring immediately to our member care meeting and then send off to people. And I know for sure, maybe you saw it in the email, that um, one of our members, Amy, received one and just absolutely loved it. And another one received it just as soon as she got home from the hospital. Unfortunately, she was readmitted directly afterwards. But uh, she did receive that love and all the prayers that were with it. So anytime we have any kids that want to, we can make more cards and we will, uh, we will celebrate God's love and um, share that with others. So thank you. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it, and yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We invite you to stand as you are able for the celebration of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And now let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated if that is easier for you for the participation in Holy Communion. Those of you who are at home, we invite you to have your bread, wine, grape juice, crackers with you, and we partake, we partake together of these words. The body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gift of his body and blood strengthen keep and unite us now and forever amen we give you thanks gracious God for we have feasted on the abundance of your house send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all strengthened by the richness of your grace in your son Jesus Christ amen receive the blessing the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, St. Mark's. Ooh, I like that nice, deep voice. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> okay, a uh, quick reminder uh, this morning after service, uh, Chula Vista C City Council member Jill Gavel, Gal Galvez, I said it right the other day, um, will be here from uh, District 2 Northwest and speaking about a project she's been working on for three years, and that is free door-to-door -door electric shuttle transportation for all seniors over 55. You'll also find information in the newsletter today. Uh, n uh, Tuesday is the Bible study at 3 p.m. If you'd like to participate, you will receive a Zoom uh, link through your email, so please check it out. Uh, it, it's very interesting and it's very engaging. And the, it's a relatively small group, so the conversation is very personal, and um, it, it's fun to have an insight into what's coming for the following Sunday's sermon as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, next Sunday, February 20th, will be the regular worship. And then following an all-congregation event, 
we will be creating blessing bags and including Bibles. So uh, if you were part of that last time, you know that that was really an amazing event. You will get a chance to take some blessing bags with you um, to hand out to people in need as you move through the community over the next couple of weeks. So please come and help assemble them. It's a huge project. And we, uh, I don't know how many we did, probably 50 bags last time. Um, so please come and help and enjoy the process of sharing our love with the larger community. Uh, just a reminder then on March 13th, which is a month away, uh, the VBS Youth and Planning meeting will occur again. It will be during the uh, community hour after um, the service that day. And then also a reminder that on Palm Sunday, we will be having a special service which will include and be focused on little people. So we'll be handing out uh, Bibles. Pastor Carla brought the Bibles to show you um, for one and a half to three year olds. And they even have a little handle for them to carry their book around with them. So uh, if you have uh, grandchildren, uh, great grandchildren, neighbors, friends, cousins, please encourage them all to come on Palm Sunday. Okay, thank you very much and God bless you. Have a good week. We invite you to stand for our sending hymn, and Tom will lead us in singing the Canticle of Turning. about to turn. 